Hello again, everybody. Um, I'd like to talk about three topics today in one video. Um, right, so today I'd like to talk about um, hibernation signs. Um, the second thing I'm going to just mention is how much space ants need, especially new colonies. I've got an interesting little thing to show on that. Um, and the third thing I'm going to talk about is pink water. So um, yeah, today's topics. Right. My main colony um, is getting ready for hibernation. Um, and I've done a video before on hibernation um, and everything that you need to do and all of the signs that you need to look out for. And I'll put a link to that in the description. But what I thought I'd just show you today is the main colony signs, which are fairly obvious to me. And um, I'll show you and if you've watched my previous video it should be fairly obvious to you. Um, so first of all, the outworld. Um, these are shots of the outworld this afternoon. It's not that cold yet. I think it was about 21 degrees in my front room this afternoon. But um, the light, you know, it, it, it gets light later. It gets dark sooner. The days are shortening. They know it's autumn. They can tell. And look how few of them there are running around the outworld. Um, and if you compare that to um, here's some video that I took that this was video I showed everybody back in May of what they were like in May in the outworld and just look at the numbers difference between May and what I've just showed you now you can really see that they're retreating and as well the water towers you saw in that May footage they were all clustered around the water towers and living out in the outworld but in the water towers the water towers are, are almost empty now as you can see here um, very few ants in there nowadays so they've all retreated into the nest well not all as you can see there are still a few in the outworld but the majority have now retreated into the nest but they're still active it's not like they've actually gone into hibernation um, in the nest there are not that many pupa um, they did start producing pupa again as I said in an earlier video because of that really warm weather we had at the end of August and the start of September they started making pupa again it almost sort of drove them on for a little bit more but it's shrinking back down there's this two little piles that's all I could find um, and, and I've shown videos earlier in the year where they had sort of mountains of pupa that were up to the roof so um, yeah pupa reduction is definitely happening happening. The ants themselves. Um, again, I've shown a previous video on ants gasters and how they expand as they drink. But um, basically, they're, when, when they're expanded, you can see these lines, these pale lines. That's the membrane between the sort of chit in the armoured plate that they're made out of. That it, It's like a concertina, like I said, and as it separates apart, there's this membrane in between. There's actually four places it can separate. The three lines you can see, and if you look closely, there's a tiny little one that can just move at the end and make a little line right at the tip. But anyway, as you can see, pretty much every single worker or perhaps even every single worker to try and spot one that's not fully extended absolutely stuffed up with sugar so they've got themselves well stocked up ready for the um, winter and then another sign is that they're just starting to, to dog pile. They're not, there's no big piles anywhere yet. They haven't all moved into a, only a few chambers and made those enormous piles that I've shown through hibernation. But there are areas on the walls where there's two or three ants starting to sit on top of each other. And the queen, they're starting to really cluster the queen. And every time I see her at the moment, she's got a, almost a ball of ants around her. Not quite, but a lot of activity around the queen. So, yeah, there's all the signs that I talked about in my hibernation video. I'm seeing them right now. And tomorrow I'm moving them into the back room, which isn't heated and the windows are open because I like a cold bedroom. Um, and they'll spend... October in there before they go into the fridge in November so they get much more used to it even getting colder and they start to do more get those pupa developed and everything like that. Um, right the second subject that I, I'd like to mention today is just how much space ants need or rather don't need. Um, this is the test tube colony the one that I did the video where I did the um, day by day development and she took 40 seven forty eight days to get her first workers well this is what they look like now she's doing quite well um, 
got, I'm not sure, it's somewhere between about 15, 15 to 20 odd workers, something like that. But what I've done is I've subdivided the test tube and I've shown me subdividing test tubes before in earlier videos uh, where I wrap a piece of plastic straw in cotton wool and slide it along to give me an outer area of the test tube to feed them in and an inner area where they live. And what I just wanted to show you is just how little space this colony is living in. There you go, it's basically one centimeter. They don't need a lot of space. I have seen posts or it on Reddit, for example, um, where people have said, oh, is this, you know, I'm worried my ants are too squashed or whatever. I've even heard of people who don't keep ants saying that, oh, you're being cruel to them, keeping them in such a small space. No, they want to live like this. Um, and then the final topic is, um, yes, the water for this colony is going pink. Um, so I looked up what this pink water is, um, and it's a bacteria called Serratia marcescens. Marcescens. Yes, yeah, Serratia marcescens. Um, and it lives in most water. Um, so uh, falsehoods about this, which I've seen, because I looked it up on ant keeping forums and stuff, and this is what, first of all, people said it's from not cleaning your test tubes right and, and then being dirty. That's not true. It lives in pretty much all water. Apparently, if we if there's water on your shower or your sink that you don't wipe for a couple of weeks or something, where, where someone goes away on holiday, perhaps, or something, you come back and it can have turned pink. Um, it's really rather common. Um, it can cause some problems in humans. I saw that uh, they did some, there was a scientific paper I read on it where fruit flies, oh, pretty much all of them are infested with this bacteria. They found very few fruit flies that weren't infested with this pink bacteria. And I did a close up on the ants that are living in there and they've drunk it. There's pink in the ants. I can see red inside some of the ants. Um, I read a lot of panic on ant keeping forums and reddits where saying, oh, you must move your ants immediately. They're going to die. Whoa, 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 whoa. From what I can see, it's it's not harmless. It can cause some complications, like I said, in humans and silkworms apparently can have some complications, but it's not instantly lethal, anything like that. Um, I'm thinking of leaving them in there and seeing what happens. Um, I know that's a little bit, oh, I don't like to use the word cruel because it's not really, but you know, they must encounter this in the, in the wild. I'm thinking, let's test this out. Let's see if I put them through hibernation with pink water, will they survive? And I can dismiss people's um, fears or I can confirm people's fears. Um, it's not the main colony. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to see what happens. Um, sorry, little ants. I hope you're okay. Anyway, thank you for watching, everybody. Until next time, goodbye.